the Electronic Church of God of Arizona brings you the Lord's Care Ministry, and it all comes from God's Library, the Bible. Welcome to the Lord's Care Ministry, the fifth work day of the week, the day that we call a Thursday, and we happen to be in October 4th of 2012. Also, it is the fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Time surely moving on, isn't it? Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth. Day 279 of the year 2012. Today's little study is the vision and the reality. The vision and the reality. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner, brother, to start and stop this little study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse at your own leisure and get much more out of it than we can got time to give you here. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the vision and the reality. And to do that, we're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2. Now you got to realize this is Paul speaking. Paul's the one that's speaking to the people there in Corinth. And we're breaking into the middle of the verse. To those who are called to be saints, thank God for being able to see all that you have not yet been. You have had a vision, but you are not yet to the reality of it by any means. It is when we are in the valley where we prove whether we will be in the choice ones. The most of us will turn back. We are not quite prepared for the bumps and bruises that must come. If we are going to be turned into the shape of the vision, we have seen what we are not and what God wants us to be. But are we willing to be battered into the shape of the vision to be used by God? The beatings will always come in the most common, everyday ways and through common, everyday people. There are times when we do not know what God's purpose is, whether we will let the vision be turned into actual character depends on us, not on God. If we prepare, prefer to relax on the mountaintop and live in the memory of the vision, then we will be of no real use to the ordinary things of which human life is made. We have to learn to live in reliance upon what we saw in the vision, not simply live in the ecstatic delight and conscious reflection upon God. This means that living the realities of our lives in the light of the vision until the truth of the vision is actually realized in us. Every bit of our training is in that direction. Learn to thank God for making his demands known. Our little I am always sucks and pouts when God says do. Let our little I am be shriveled up in God's wrath and indignation. I am who I am. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14 has sent me to you. That I am, I am is a Lord, what you can consider the Old Testament. I don't figure the, any part of the Bible is old. If you look at it, why, it's all very well up to date to you. But so you know where it come from, like out of the Old Testament. It's the Lord speaking. I am who I am. And very few people really know 
that the Lord of what you call the Old Testament is Jesus Christ of the New. Now to continue. He must dominate. Isn't it piercing to realize that God not only knows where we live, but also knows the gutters into which we crawl. He will hunt us down as fast as a flash of lightning. No human being knows human beings as God does. Brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21 we read, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For all the saints, in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. And brethren, are you using this fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles as a way to serve God? Or are you one of those out here that make void the word of God by just going about your merry way? You don't even know about the Feast of Tabernacles. I even went to a relative that is a strong Baptist and mentioned the Feast of Tabernacles. And what did I get back? Well, what is that? What are you doing? What's the Feast of Tabernacles? A strong Baptist. Good character. But they don't teach anything of God's holy days. But they know all about Satan's holidays. The Christmas, the Easter's, the Halloween's. And I tell them that's wrong. Oh, but it's so much fun for the kids. Teaching the kids the way of Satan instead of the way of God. It makes you sick. And I tell them that. And I actually lose relation because sometimes I open my mouth when it should have been shut, I suppose. But that's the way I am. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom, and have eternal salvation with the Father and the Son. Get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. And start following the way of life of the Lord. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you. To drive away all doubt. Teach you his ways instead of the way of Satan. And that will strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ by going to your library, that is the Holy Bible, and see what it says about Satan's way and what will happen to you. If you continue to follow Satan's holidays, go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. It says you're on that broad path that leads to destruction. Get off that broad path. Make a right turn and get on that narrow path. Follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Don't just say, I love you, Jesus. No, that won't do it. You have to, in your heart, know you love Jesus and tell him, I'm going to follow you. And brethren, while you're on your knees, Ask him for forgiveness for following the tradition of men. Also ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter, that library he has given to you, and that library is your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for the day. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Email me at 473 at
Cox.net or check into my webpage at www.fcg82.com backslash h2.htm. Thank you.